today's gospel and the apostle together with it give us a beautiful picture and a revelation not only about the life of Christ but about our own lives in Christ, our own lives as Orthodox Christian people and the world around us. We should go back just a few verses in this reading today. For Christ is standing in the temple and being questioned as usual by the scribes and the lawyers. And at one time he says, Abraham longed to see my day. And they replied, but you're still a young man, you're not 60 years old yet. How could you talk about Abraham longing to see your day? And he said, truly, truly, I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. And notice he didn't say before Abraham was, I was, but I am. This is what he said to Moses on Mount Sinai. I am that I am. And they understood very well that he was saying that he was the God who spoke, who visited Abraham at the Oak of Mambre, the God who spoke to Moses on the Mount of Sinai, that he was the God who gave the law. And now he's standing in their midst. But they were enraged and they couldn't hear what he had to say. So it says he closed their eyes so they could not see him and he walked out from away from them. And as he was walking down from the temple, there was a man who was born blind. And that man did not ask anything from Jesus Christ. He didn't really know that he was there. But our Lord Jesus Christ turned to him asking, do you wish to be healed? Well, everyone who's blind wishes to see. So he made clay from the dust of the earth and his own spittle and placed on his eyes. Go, he said, to the pool of Siloam and baptize yourself. Be baptized in the water and you will see. So he went to the pool of Siloam and washed himself and he could see. And when the man testified to the scribes and the Pharisees and the lawyers, he said to them at one place, I told you but you did not listen. So those who would not see Jesus Christ, who refused even though they had the testimony before them, who refused to believe even though they had the word of Moses, since Christ held their eyes that they couldn't see him, they also lost their spiritual sight. They were blind spiritually, they were blind in their hearts. And now Jesus Christ holds their eyes so they can't see him and he walks out from the midst of them. They rejected him. They closed their spiritual eyes so they were blind to him. And now their physical eyes are held and he departs from them. And this can happen, brothers and sisters, to us as well. That we can close our spiritual eyes to our Lord Jesus Christ. And our Lord Jesus Christ is not a dictator. He does not want us to be in some kind of bondage, but to come freely and give love for the love that he's giving us. And if we close our spiritual eyes to him altogether and desire for him to depart from us, then he will depart from us. He will depart from our hearts. He will, can even depart from our minds. And now our Lord Jesus Christ goes to a man who asks nothing and heals him his physical eyes because the man's spiritual eyes are already opened and he will be able to see Jesus Christ and he will hear him and he will worship him because he has seen the truth and the evidence. His spiritual eyes were opened and so now Christ opens his physical eyes just as the Pharisees' spiritual eyes were closed and he closed their physical eyes and departed from them. And here this man goes to give testimony and say, this man healed me, he gave me my sight back. I was born blind. How is it that anyone can open the eyes of someone who was born blind? And now they won't hear, but close their ears. And what excuse do they use? 
Jesus didn't keep the Sabbath. He broke the Sabbath. You see, they did not even understand that the Sabbath is actually a gift to mankind. If God had not given us the Sabbath day of rest, slaves and servants, people who were employed, would have had to work seven days a week until he dropped dead from exhaustion. But God has given one day of rest even to the cattle, even to the oxen that will turn the mill to, to grind the wheat, to everything, even to the land itself. He gave a Sabbath on the seventh year because if the land is rested for one season, it will come back and give greater crops. But if you do not give the land a rest, you'll burn it out completely and it will produce nothing. So our Lord Jesus Christ is trying to convey also this message. Look, I'm the God who gave you the law about the Sabbath. And I'm telling you, the Sabbath is a gift from God to you so that you can have some kind of rest and restoration. I ask that you come to worship on this day. But take a rest. But they want to condemn him now for the breaking of a law. I want to ask all of us, all of you, and those who will be watching on YouTube as well, how many times do you put the law above the love of Jesus Christ? How many times do you quote some law from the Old Testament and place it above Jesus Christ, make it more important to you than Jesus Christ himself, the living God who gave his life for us? Apostle Paul told us we've been delivered from the old law, that we no longer have anything to do with the old law, that the old commandments are of nothing to us but the commandments of Jesus Christ. And we become so legalistic, so worried about little points of law, that we forget about the Savior. The Savior. <laughs> we forget about the Savior himself and about the people whom he loves. So when we gather in the temple here, <coughs> let's have eyes with which to see and ears with which to hear that we might see the true Lord Jesus Christ, that we might see the Lord, the God of love, the God of compassion, the God of mercy, the God of tender-heartedness, the God who refused to condemn the woman taken in adultery, the God who refused to condemn Fultini, the woman at the well, although she was a Samaritan, but rather embraced him with divine love. And the centurion, who was a Roman and outside the holy nation, there was no condemnation from Christ, but he responded to his prayer instead. Brothers and sisters, we need to think very seriously about what it means to be Orthodox Christians. If it was just a matter of keeping laws and rules and regulations, and the following canons. We would do no more than pagans do. We would do no more than atheists do. Because atheists keep the law. Atheists very often have great compassion. Atheists follow rules. So what good is it to us to simply follow rules and regulations and laws and have our hearts empty of the love of our Lord Jesus Christ and use the law as an excuse for not living a life in Christ, for not imitating Christ. This is a great catastrophe for Christianity in our day, that we do not pay attention, that we do not think, that we just follow what some televangelist or some Protestant minister is saying instead of listening to Jesus Christ. Instead of opening our hearts that we might have spiritual eyes with which to see, and not just to see Jesus Christ only, but if we have spiritual eyes, we can see the image and likeness of God in every other human being. And this is the life in Christ. For Jesus Christ said, love one another as I have loved you. How can we do less? How can we claim to be Christians if we will not obey Christ? Did he not say, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you? This is the commandment of Jesus Christ. 
All of the other law and all of the other prophets, Jesus Christ told us, rest on just this one thing, that you love God with all your being and that you love your neighbor as yourself. This is the law, this is the prophets, and all the law and all the prophets rest on this commandment of Christ. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you wouldn't condemn yourself, don't condemn your neighbor. Brothers and sisters, we need to learn these things as little children because we've forgotten what it is to be a Christian and we think it's all about external behavior and about judging and condemning the world and others around us. But who art thou, O man, to judge another man's servant? And Apostle Paul said, Who am I that I could judge those outside the church? We are here to demonstrate, to show, like the blind man did, the healing of humanity by Jesus Christ. We are not here about punishment. We are not here about degrading and humiliating people. We are here to demonstrate the healing power of Jesus Christ and demonstrate that the gospel and our salvation are both about healing, not about destroying and not about punishing, but healing mankind. And every one of us can become healers if only we will strive to obey the four commandments of Jesus Christ and strive to live a life in Christ instead of a life in the darkness of law. Brothers and sisters, the Sabbath was made for man. Man was not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath is a gift. It is not a burden. It's not something to weigh us down. It's not something to crush us. But something to give us a day to glorify our Creator and to rejoice in one another in the fellowship with one another. And to try to learn this new commandment of Christ, to love one another as He loved us. This is all the law and all the prophets and all the commandments and this is the most sure path to salvation itself. To love one another as Christ loved us. To love God with all of our being. Amen. Amen. Amen.